Today is a 9 p.m. 2-5 game, $500 buy-in, and the very first hand I get is Ace King suited. Absolutely a stunner straight out of the gate. The under the gun player opens. He makes it 40. I thought he made it 40. He actually makes it 30. I thought that was a big bet from under the gun, so I was going to proceed cautiously. The player to my right makes the call. Action's on me, and I have to decide, am I going to put in a 3-bet or just call? It's my first hand of the night. I'm nervous if I put in a 3-bet. I'm going to have to commit my stack on the flop no matter what, so I just make the call for 40, and then I find out it's not a $40 bet. It's only 30. I probably would have put in the 3-bet. I just was a little cautious because an older gentleman was opening under the gun for such a large sizing, but regardless, we're going three ways to the flop. $100 in the pot. The dealer burns, turns, flips up the cards, and I have a straight draw. It's a gut shot straight draw. There's no clubs on deck. Two overs. Now, this is not the type of flop I want to see. I'm going to have to be careful based off the next bet sizing, and it's 35. The original under the gun player continues betting. The middle position player comes along quickly. I have to call 35 for our $200 pot, so I'm in. Hoping to catch a strong card on the turn. The dealer pounds the table, burns and turns. It's a four of hearts. And my dreams of winning my first hand with a monster are starting to slip away. Luckily for me, though, the under-the-gun player decides to slow down. Check the action of the two players behind him. Action is on the middle position player to my right. And he's not slowing down. He is going for a large bet, a pot size bet. He makes it $200, and I make my hand go into the muck. A rough start to the session, but in the 2-5 game, you can't let yourself get down when you lose money fast because you can make money fast as well. 14 of my stack. I look down at another connected clubs, jack 10 of clubs in the big blind. It's a beautiful hand in a terrible position. The player to my left stacks out 15, tosses him into the pot, makes the bet. The low jack makes the quick call. Action folds to the button, who also decides he wants to come along throw in 15. And this seems like the perfect hand to turn into a 3-bet bluff. You have to have some 3-bet bluffs in your range. Jack 10's a great one. I make it 80, and 80 is going to get through. All the players fold, scooping an uncontested 47, adding back to my stack up to 457. I don't have to wait long for my next hand. Fold away some junk until I look down at pocket nines in the hijack. 457 in my stack. Action folds to me. I open it to 15, and I get two defenders out of the blinds. The small blind and the big blind both come along. We're going three ways to the flop, and it comes out 10 high. The small blind sends the action to the big blind. The big blind spins his finger around, sends it to me. I'm going to protect my hand bet on this board. I make it 25, and both players quickly fold out of the way. Adding to my stack, fighting back, going on the attack, but not quite back to even, up to 487. Lose it down just a little bit to 479 when I pick up ace of clubs, deuce of clubs under the gun. I limp. The hijack makes it 20. The cutoff throws in a call. Action folds back around to me. I would have opened this hand, but the reason I limped was because I was getting drinks from the server. Just wasn't really paying attention. I'm just going to call. I could potentially 3-bet here, but I think that I'm fine making the call as well. We go to the flop looking for some clubs, and we get a club in the window. Get a club and another club behind. I'm going to put in a check raise here with my nut flush. Backdoor straight draw. Ace over card, but it checks through. We go to the turn, and it pairs the board. Another king on deck. No one seemed interested to bet the king, and so I'm going to bet it with a very small bet. I make it $10. I'm trying to take it down now. Maybe I should have stuck to my check raise plan, but the paired board really lowers the value if I make a flush. And so I'm betting as if I have a king. I get a call from the original better and from the cutoff. We go to the river. It's the queen of hearts. I think that if anyone had a king, they would have raised on the last street. So deep in my heart, I know a big over bet, maybe like $200 would take it down. I check instead, not having the courage to fire a bullet. It checks to the cutoff who throws in 60. I don't see many hands he would be doing this with when you discount him having kings, maybe like ace, queen, going for very thin value or just reading the weakness of the table and making a bet regardless. Now, if I want to take this down with a bluff, it's going to have to be even bigger. And so I decide to play conservatively, fold my hand. I'm curious if you guys think I should have strong arm my opponents off of that hand. Speaking of strong arms, 9 out of 10 doctors say getting your daily likes in increases muscle strength, increases happiness. Thank you so much for supporting my journey. I love you guys and gals. My next hand is King Jack offsuit in middle position, 444 in my stack. The player to my right limps. I open it up to 20. The small blind defends. The middle position player calls 65 in the pot. Three-way action the flop, and it comes out 9 high. Definitely not hitting flops like I'd like to. The small blind does a little twirl of his finger, sends the action over to me. I decide, you know what? I'm just going to check this one. Let's see a free card. It comes a 10, giving me the double belly blaster, the double open. I don't, I don't know my poker terminology. I can hit a straight two different ways. I still have two over cards, and I sense weakness among the opposition. And so I'm going to bet my equity slide in 45, and 45 is going to quickly take it down. 
And speaking of taking it down, I'm about to go to the World Series of Poker in Vegas and take down the main event, just like the champions you see on the screen above. I'm selling action. I still have about 8 to 10% left of the 40 that I'm selling, so make sure you shoot me an email. Get in on the glory, get in on the fun, and potentially get in on life-changing money. The next hand I pick up is King-Queen offsuit in the small blind. 482 in my stack. The under the gun spices up the pot with 15. It fools around to the low jack who decides he wants to tango. Of course, I'm going to be defending my small blind. And we go to the flop three ways. It comes out queen high. I check to my opponents. I'm checking range here, and it checks through. We go to the turn, which is another five, pairing the board, and now I need to attack. I need to put out a bet if no one's going to do it for me. Defending against backdoor hearts, defending against hands like jack 10. I make it 20, and 20 is going to take the pot down. Just winning small pots this session. Maybe I'll get a big pot in a moment. But right now, I finally have gotten back over my starting stack of 500, up to 517, and I pick up pocket sevens on the button. The under the gun player calls. The middle position player makes it 20. And we're going to get a lot of callers here. The low jack makes the call. The cutoff comes along. I'm going to set mine on the button, of course. The under the gun player completes. We're headed to the flop five ways. $100 already in this pot. And it comes out with a seven rainbow board with an ace and a king. The first thing I think to myself is I am going to make a lot of money in this pot. Action is on the middle position player. He makes it 30. He's going to continue betting. It folds around to me. I make the call. The under the gun player comes along as well. There's already almost $200 in the pot. The turn brings in a lot of backdoors, backdoor flushes, backdoor straights. At first, it seemed like a safe card. At first, it seemed like a seven. I thought I had made quads. But when you look at it, this card does bring in a lot of potential disaster for me. And the original better fires again 90 into the pot. The question is, do I want to put in a raise here? Do I want to jam all in? Do I want to spring the trap now? Do I want to call and maybe get the under the gun player and build this pot? I decide that I can just make the call. We'll see where it goes from here. I feel really safe with my sevens. And so I throw in the 90 as well. The player under the gun is smacking chips in between his hands, but then quickly makes the call as well. Doesn't it take him long whatsoever. And the worst card in the deck comes out. The queen of clubs bringing in more straights, bringing in the backdoor flush. This time, action still on the under the gun player who has check called all the way to the river, and he grabs chips and throws in a bet of 175. I just don't see the big blind player having any bluff, so he's definitely probably betting for value. The original better gets out of the way. Now action's on me. If I don't think my opponent has bluffs, he's only betting with value. What value hands does he have? Maybe a set of sixes that I beat. Maybe ace-queen, ace-king. But if he had those hands, I could see him just check calling. And so now I'm really faced with a tough decision because do I beat any of his value hands that he would lead out with? Regardless, I make the call. The sevens are too strong, and my fears were right. He has ace-deuce of clubs. Called with the ace. Got the club on the turn. Continued to the river, and now he's taking a massive pop for me. I'm down to 202. If I would have just taken it down on the turn, I'd have an $800 stack. Look down at 6-4 of spades in the low jack. Still frustrated about the last hand, and this is a suited hand. It's connected, so when it gets to me, I open it up to 20. Not a good idea to be betting this hand with my short stack, but I'm slightly on tilt. I get a call from my left. The button throws in 20. The under-the-gun player completes. Headed four ways to the flop. Almost $100 in the pot, and it comes out almost perfect for my hand. Two spades. Open it as straight draw. How can this not be my pot at the end of the hand? How could the poker gods give me something so beautiful and not reward me with a fresh stack of chips? The under-the-gun player decides he's going to donk out. He makes it 40 and of course, I have no chips in my stack for the 2-5 game, so I ship it all in. And we're going to see a run out if he makes the call. All the other players fold. My opponent, who put in the 40, is a little reluctant to make the call. Asks for a count. Doesn't quite put in his chips. But surely he has a strong hand, so I figured he'd insta-call. There he goes. He makes the call, and we're going to a run out. I'm live against sets. I'm live against spades. My opponent flips up his hand. I take a look at it, and it's the worst hand he could possibly have. An open-ended straight flush draw. Oh, and a jack comes on the turn. I'm absolutely dead. I can only split the pot. A nine seals the deal. And that, unfortunately, is going to wrap up my three-hour session. In for 500 out for $0 for a loss of $500. Thank you so much for watching. Kato out. And if you enjoyed that video, why not enjoy another? You have two great options on the screen. You can also subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. Enjoy. And if you want one of these gorgeous pirate card protectors, link in the description below. Thank you for your support.